Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. It's very good to be back uh, after a couple of weeks away. I find myself in a, a rather strange situation in as much as I'm preparing uh, harvest celebrations for the schools. I'm going into Punnettstown School uh, shortly for their harvest festival and we have the uh, All Saints and St Richard's Primary School Harvest Festival tomorrow. And yet today in our reading and in our reflection, which has kindly been prepared uh, by Christo Caulfield, I find us, we find ourselves in very different territory. We're going to be thinking this morning about the theme of captivity, not just captivity necessarily in the sense of being behind bars, but the captivity that many of us, in fact all of us, to some extent or another, have experienced over the last 18 months. Captivity in its broader context, captivity to addiction, captivity to the things that uh, hold us back, our uh, self-esteem, uh, captivity to all sorts of things that can harm us and uh, hurt us. So we're going to be uh, singing hymn number 409, uh, There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord. If you've got a hymn book at home, do join in with that, uh, number 409. And as I say, our reflection today has kindly been prepared by Christo Caulfield. So we're going to begin, as always, by uh, lighting the candle. And do light your own candle if you have one to hand as we begin. And as we light the candle, we remember God's presence with us and his love for us. So let's just take a moment of quiet and begin uh, by committing this time to the Lord in prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is uh, Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we are filled with joy. <clears throat> Restore our fortunes, Lord like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the following uh, reflection on that psalm by Christo Caulfield. I have stepped away from our lecturing readings this morning to look at Psalm 126. This psalm is one of 15 known as the Song of Ascents. They were traditionally sung by pilgrims as they journeyed to Jerusalem for their festivals. Some of the older Bible translations, including the Book of Common Prayer, take the themes of captivity and release in the opening verse as opposed to the restoration of Zion. The next three verses paint a positive picture of what this should look like, and the final three are the prayer to God that this might happen. I've been looking at the question of captivity recently. This isn't out of choice, but circumstance, especially in one of my secular roles for a local charity. For many of the charity's beneficiaries, lockdown has made the sense of captivity very real in their lives. And for us all, the whole process has been costly in different ways. We breathed a sigh of relief and release when the majority of the restrictions fell away. But for a minority, little seemed to have changed. 
the future looked equally bleak. In a bygone age, the nation would have been called to days of prayer. These took place at the outset and the end of the process as people looked afresh at the resulting devastation. Nowadays, the losses and hurts tend to be better hidden as the world wants to be normal. Yet we are easily panicked when supply lines break down. This time it's petrol. What will be next, I wonder? Society's response to normality is to get busy, to make life look as though the clock can be turned back. We view the past with unjustified nostalgia. In a sense, I believe we have developed a spirit of captivity over the last 18 months that we must lose. This may take longer than we expect because the effect of shock has a lasting impact. As the psalmist says, restore our fortunes, O Lord. Sorry, restore our fortunes, O Lord. That is our prayer in the final verse. My grateful thanks to Christo for that helpful reflection on our psalm this morning. For our prayers, uh, we're going to use prayers on the theme of uh, freedom and those who are denied freedom. Uh, so let's let's just pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you came into our world and lived and died among us in order to set us free from everything that holds us captive. Thank you for that glorious freedom and thank you for those who in turn work or laboured in times past to bring freedom for others from whatever denies, destroys or negates life. Especially we thank you for those who, in your name, strove to overcome and outlaw the evil of slavery, determined that all should enjoy the liberty and dignity they deserve. Help us to learn from the mistakes of the past and to build on the achievements so that we, in some small way, may contribute to building a better world and to bringing nearer the fulfilment of your eternal purpose. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Redeemer God, reach out to those who feel trapped, imprisoned by circumstances, held captive by past mistakes, present worries, or future prospects. Give to them and to all the liberty that you alone can give, your truth that sets us free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the collect for this week. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we gather then all our prayers and praises into one as we say together the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So I'm going then to sing verses from hymn number 409. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For 
justice, for freedom, for mercy hear our prayer. In sorrow, in grief, be near, hear our prayer, O God. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. For wisdom, for courage, for comfort, hear our prayer. In weakness, in fear, be near, hear our prayer, O God. There is a longing in our hearts, O Lord, for you to reveal yourself to us. There is a longing in our hearts for love we only find in you, our God. Lord, save us, take pity, light in our darkness. We call you, we wait, be near, hear our prayer, O God. Well, thank you very much for joining me uh, this morning. A reminder that we're back again on Tuesday morning at the same time. And if you uh, live locally to Heathfield, then do please uh, join us on Sunday at St. Richard's Church uh, for our 10 o'clock service. And there is uh, also a service at St. George's uh, at three o'clock in the afternoon. And that's a service of Holy Communion. So do join us for either of those if you're able to do so. We come then to the final blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us and all those we love and pray for this day and always. Amen.